Okay, we're on to the uh, fuel pump. Uh, the fuel pumps that we have sitting in front of us, the one here on the left is the one that originally was on my engine. And this linkage is like totally shot, even the pin here is war. It has the stamp steel or cast steel lever on it. This one here is one off of another 55 Buick engine. Uh, that was a car I recycled. This is an NOS pump, not an NOS, it's an NOS rebuild, let's put it that way. It's in a rebuilder's box. This is the one I had on the engine that failed in about two minutes. Uh, it was rebuilt a long time ago, obviously. It's the, everything's dried up and cracked in there. Um, but you notice this one has the stamp steel arm. And then these two have the single bolt top on them that holds this cover on. My original one has this aluminum cast top on it. And I looked in the service manual a few minutes ago. It shows this style in the photos of the service manual. So I'm not too sure about if those are aftermarket, later model. Um, so I'm not sure if I can take parts out of these and try to fix this arm situation here. So I can use that original style. So um, I got to do a little bit of research on that before I move forward. Uh, I'm tearing apart the second fuel pump. The first one is all apart and it's soaking already. And that was the original one. This is the later style 55 Buick in a pump. And the first thing you got to do is you got to get that pin out of that shaft. There's a little washer that goes there. And then the end of the shaft is like peened over. So what I did, I just got underneath of there and just pried it off. And as you can see, the, I got the pin almost out. So that's the first thing you need to do. And location of that spring in there. I don't know if you can see it in there. Make sure you get everything back in the way it goes. We'll be taking that apart. I pulled a small screw out of the top, pulled the cover off, and you can see there's a lot of crap floating around there. So if you've got an old car that's been sitting, and... Uh, it would be a good idea to rebuild this pump because um, a lot of crap in there and it's going to eventually get in your carburetor. Alright, I just got all the screws out of this top cover. You got a spring, you got a little guide there. And it goes through this little boot. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that seals the shaft uh, basically to the crankcase of the engine. So that's really important that that seal's good. If you look at that one real close, it's cracked and split. It's old. So if you have a diaphragm that's bad also, you could be pumping gas right into your crankcase. So just pulled the vacuum side of this pump apart. As you can see, this, uh, I just talked about that sh excuse me, this shaft seal. And it had popped out of the housing here. And if you can see all this, this is engine oil. So it was basically pumping engine oil out of the crankcase, you know, and, um, whoop, there goes the spring. So it's, you know, so this is important stuff here because, um, you can see where all the oil is in there. And now you can pull the shaft out all the way. So this pump wasn't working right either. So hopefully I can have enough parts to make one good pump. This is the, um, early style fuel pump for the 55 Buick Sentry and I just got it out of the bead blaster and I did take the valves out of that one it's the old style with the metal top or cast top cover I haven't taken the valves out of this one yet um, I gotta do that yet and this is the center body from another pump because my original one these holes are totally wore out here shaft and everything was wore out so I'm going to use the lever and the new parts in the kit with this housing so we'll get this thing all together and 
I'll do parts of it. So that should be cool. And then I'll do a second one for a backup pump. Okay, beans. I have a couple of pumps here. Um, I left one of the with the valves intact, so I remember how it goes. But I also took photos, so it doesn't really matter. Um, here's all the parts in the kit. Uh, I got the diaphragm plane over here. Okay. Um, obviously, the valves, check valves, are different looking. They're not going to be exactly the same. But this is what replaces these. One goes one way and one the other. But there is a paper gasket you got to stick down in there. And then, then this is one's going to go like this. And then it has to be staked. So the best way to do that is you get you got to somehow get some pressure on this. And I'll probably use a small C-clamp or something. I'll show you that. So you've got downward pressure sealing against that gasket before you uh, put those stakes back in. Because if you stake it and it's not seated all the way, you're going to have a leak there. So that's one of the first steps. Here's the setup that I'm using here. Um, I got a small socket, got my little C-clamp, and I got the C-clamp clamped in the vise so I can control it. And I went ahead and pressed it in. I do have my gasket under there. And now what I want to do is gently stake that in um, so it stays put. And hopefully I'll have enough room in there to get a little punch in there to give it a little steak. It doesn't need much, just a little bit to hold it in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, I just basically used a nail set, a very small flat tipped punch, and just gave it a little tap right where the old one was, and you can see it expanded the metal out. Um, and basically the way to test it is to put it to your mouth and listen for that valve to open. Yep, it's a one-way valve. I can only uh, suck on it. I can't blow on it. And it feels like it's seed seated tight, so now I can move on to the other one. Now on the second one, it's kind of down in a hole, and you have actually have the, that rubber sealing um, ring right there. So I use a piece of thin wall, because if you get it, use a socket, it's probably going to nab the edge of that rubber, and you're going to ruin it. And now you're going to have to order another kit, so... I used a piece of thin wall copper tubing. I rigged it up here in my little C clamp and device. And once I had it um, down in there, um, I used a little nail set. Just kind of a small little punch. And uh, it seemed to do a good job. I don't have an actual staking punch or anything like that. It's kind of like a square slot. It looks like actually a flat blade screwdriver they use, but um, And I did check it like the other one. I held my thumb over this hole here And it also works So it's only going one way That's what you want. So that part's done and I'll move on to the other one Now on the center body section uh, you got to pay attention. Uh, I got that one staked. Um, both of these go in the same way. So one isn't reversed like on the, um, the vacuum part. The vacuum part you got one going each way. And that's because it actually goes up through this other port here. So that's the difference there. So pay attention to that and obviously the, the new stuff is going to look totally different than the old stuff so be aware on which side the seal is and which way the fuel flows so you get that correct now this one here does not have to be staked because it's flush and it's basically going to be held in place with your uh, bottom piece here and the diaphragm gasket so that one doesn't have to be staked so Next thing we got to do is put these rod ready seals to in. Put this little uh, shaft lever seal in. I've got my gasket in there. And I'm hoping that I can use um, my drill. 
drill press here is a press. I mean, it's, well, we'll see how this works. Make sure it's straight. Looking good. too carried away. I want it to go straight. It looks pretty darn good. Um, really difficult to tell if you get it all the way, but I mean it kind of stops, so I don't want to uh, force it or anything. I just put, put quite a bit of pressure on it with a drill press, so Once again, I'm using a piece of thin wall copper tubing with a little brass plug in the end. Whatever you got laying around, whatever works, you know. So I'll stake that one. And uh, this part of the assembly is about done. i got to put my shaft seal in the other end. And we'll do that. And we can start putting this thing together. Okay, you want to get your spring put in there. You got your diaphragm. You want to make sure that this slot is lined up this way when you put this down in here. Okay, that looks correct. Get that on there. And get your top cover. This face is this way here, so line up those holes there. And you're going to get this pushed down in there. Get a couple screws started. I'd really like to see how they, do, they did this at the factory. Because I'm sure they couldn't be screwing around as long as I have. We'll make sure you get that thing in the hole there. Not getting it. There we go. That gives you a start. And if you look in there, it should be lined up pretty darn close. Um, we'll move on. Well, I just discovered uh, something new. My old style arm, this one here, this is the newer style. This would be 54, 55. This would be um, late 55, 56, I assume. Um, I'm using a different body because my shaft hole is wore out in mine. And I just discovered that this does not physically fit. It's too wide. So, if you're using a later model body, you got to use the later model arm with the later model um, diaphragm. So, uh, the saga continues. It would be a lot simpler if you just had two of the same exact pump, or two kits, put them together, but of course that would be too easy. Um, so I'm just trying to make two pumps out of three. We'll see how this goes. Okay, what I ended up doing here is after fiddling it for about 10-15 minutes, I found the easiest way to get this hooked into the lever and the spring inside was to go ahead and put this in with four screws but leave it loose. And then I finagled this lever in to get it into the hook um, and the diaphragm and then slid my pin in. It took about 10 minutes to get it, get it just right, get the light in there so I could see what I was doing. But I got that in there. Now what I have to do is support this. I have to pull this down so there's like it's neutral before I tighten those screws so I don't mess with that diaphragm. So 
that's my next step is to get those tight and I'll uh, get that neutraled out. Well, I finally got it finagled in there, got my pin in, and I neutraled this and snugged up my screws. And you can see that the, in here the valves are doing their thing. So that's uh, that was a pain in the butt. I mean, uh, you better take some time and get some patience and uh, put all the hammers away because uh, you're going to want to hit this thing. Okay, I got my top cover on there. I just got them snug for now, but I want to make sure that this thing's pumping. So, yep, I got suction there, and it's holding the spring, so it's pumping. Of course, the only way to really check it is with fuel in it, but uh, we know that all the check valves are in right, and we got a good seal. So we'll move on to the vacuum section. Okay, on this side, I will show you, this is the, um, the newer style with the slots in it. Um, so you're going to have to put it in this way and turn it and get it locked into that lever, which I don't know how difficult that's going to be. And I did put some lubricant on the shaft here to go through that rubber. Hopefully this will go fairly uneventful. There. I actually got it the first time. Miracles do happen. Now you can't really mess this up too bad because it only goes on one way. So basically I'm going to get that on there and get some screws started and get that on there. Okay, the question is, is this too much leakage for my vacuum pump on my fuel pump here? Let me get it pumped up here. that's normal or that's too much leakage. I put a little three in one oil and a little check valves and everything and everything seems to be sealed up good. But I just thought that's quite a bit of leakage, I don't know. Okay, I found out something very interesting. This is the original bottom from the, uh, I believe it would be the 5455 pump, and you notice that this part here is a lot longer and it takes a longer spring, and that's the one I originally had on there, and I was only able to get about nine inches of vacuum, so I went ahead and rebuilt this uh, other one, which is a later one, and I got it hooked up, and let's see what we got now. Looks like it popped up to 14, 13, 14 there. Um, seems like I got quite a bit of leak back here though. Almost 15 inches of vacuum. So um, apparently the spring and everything is a little bit, we're using the same diaphragm so uh, spring must be quite a bit stiffer because that's what's providing you the pressure on the diaphragm there. So it looks like um, this might be what I'm going to be using. So I'll go from there. <laughs>